This video is to take you through the functionality that we've achieved so far in this prototype. This is far from finished, but it's just to give you an idea of what we're aiming for. Um, this is the Clipper tool in version 5. Here is the address bar. We'll be able to browse to resources online and locally in the finished version, but for now we're po pasting in uh, the location and then clicking on the Go button which takes us to the uh, the video resource and allows us to play it. If we like it, we'll add it to the resources, which I'm going to do now. That's the, the local resource list here in Clipper. And here it comes in here. That's active in the resource panel down the left-hand side. I'll clip on it, make it active, and I can, once I get around to it, make this a more meaningful title. I'll call it Animation 1, save the changes, that appears there. This is all running on the Clipper tool, which in turn is running on top of the Air Runtime platform from Adobe. And inside that platform there is a version of SQL Lite, apparently with some storage capacity of something like 2 terabytes. All this information has been stored in that version of SQL Lite. We're not aiming to store the videos themselves in SQLite, but reference the location to them. So you can see there's going to be loads and loads of storage capacity here. So anyway, coming back, anyway, coming back to this, I've added this resource to the resource list, named it in the properties here, or metadata if you like to call it that. I've saved the changes and I can play it now. I can pause it. <coughs> and here I'd like to create a new clip nearly at the end of this short animation. I'll do that by clicking on that button. And you'll see the properties uh, panel changes here now to clip properties. Uh, untitled clip automatically comes up. And in this right hand panel here you'll see the thumbnail for the, the clip. I'm going to call this animation clip 1. Click Save Clip and you'll see it changes there. And we've also got the in and the out points here. I don't have full control of the timeline because we've not been bothering with that kind of stuff. It's more the, the logical uh, side of things we're doing at the minute. When I've created a clip from the resource, uh, I can create an annotation by clicking on this button. That's not active at the minute, but when it does, a new window will appear here covering all this uh, for the user to insert their annotation. So, resources on the left, display in the middle, clip on the right. What's displayed here will be whatever is active. So if I click back on animation now, your resource, it'll uh, take me back to viewing that resource. If I click on this animation clip 1 from within the animation 1 resource, I'm now viewing that clip and looking at the properties for that clip. Now just to show you bringing in another resource, I'm just working with local resources at the minute because it's quicker um, to do so. Online resources are a bit variable but we'll be producing another demo video later to show you them in action. So here's another uh, local resource I'm bringing in. This is a video about Egypt. I've decided I like this, so I'm going to pause it. And I'm going to add it to my resource list down here by clicking on Add Resource. Uh, you can see now the clip properties, sorry, the properties thing here, which should say resource properties, by the way. Ah, oh, here it does, yes. Um, I'm going to rename this. Egypt, save changes, you'll see the resource is now called Egypt, that's active there, so I'll play it. Uh, at the minute it's going back to the beginning, uh, I could drag through it in the finished version and create a clip from there, um, but I'm just going to pause it in a wee while, yeah, I'll pause it here, I'll decide this is a good place to start a new clip click on the create clip, click properties box